Make Your Own Way is for creative people who have the courage and the determination to live and work on their own terms. Today's episode of Make Your Own Way features Danny Dodge, a videographer, filmmaker, cameraman, drone pilot, inventor. I hope you'll enjoy his story. Stay tuned for Danny Dodge. Welcome, everybody. This is Make Your Own Way, a podcast for creative people who are trying to make their way in the world, create their own path. My guest today is someone that I've known for, gosh, probably almost 35 years. I hate to say that out loud. But you know what's really funny, uh, Danny, is that I don't think we've ever actually met in person. Probably not. You know what? You were smart enough to stay away. (laughs) (laughs) but i've known danny dodge since the mid 80s and uh, we went to college at the same place and uh, it was a small college so the fact that we never met there really surprises me yeah Um, yeah i mean really really small but uh i remember the name frank taggart all over the place i don't know i thought maybe you were a newscaster at that point in time and i just remembered you because of that (laughs) well i think maybe you filmed me once did I really? I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure, oh but my, uh, wow. I'm I'm pretty sure that you did at least one time uh, yeah. back in the the broadcasting department or in the journalism department or whatever it was that Don Boggs ran over at oh, Anderson. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, and you were an entertainer at that point in time, right? I played music. Yeah, I That's wasn't right. very entertaining. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, we all start somewhere, man. That's, so it is. <laughs> I'm much more entertaining now. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's one of the things I'm going to have to do is come and see you because we. What do we live? Uh, 15, 20 minutes apart. And not I even nice, that. Yeah. Oh, it's ridiculous. So okay, let's make a let's make a date. Well, I mean, okay. For the wives, we're going to make a, 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 a like a boy outing sort of a thing, not a date. But that uh, works. Yeah, I got to come see yeah. you. Well, I'd love it. <laughs> well, right. turns out that, I don't know, six years ago or so, I moved here out to northern Colorado. And um, I put together a fundraiser for a really cool charity called Hearts and Horses. It's a, a therapeutic riding program. And it's just amazing. And they do great things for uh, for people with disabilities and trauma and a lot of vets returning from war and dealing with PTSD. And Hearts and Horses is just a great organization. So I put together a real short uh, recording for them called Songs for Hearts and Horses. Oh, really? Yeah. No kidding. You did that. I'll be that, was, that was my deal. Wow. And in the process of doing that, I saw a video and it said produced by Danny Dodge. And I thought, <laughs> now I, that name rings a real strong bell for me. And it turns out it was the same guy that I had heard about all those many years ago in college. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So you have uh, you have followed your uh, your creative path into being a video production specialist, cameraman, um, no, inventor. If I could figure out what I really was, <laughs> I would be so happy. I don't know it. It flips from one thing to another and back and forth, you know. And it keeps me happy. So you know, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing that I'm curious about though is like, would figuring it out make it, make it any easier? <laughs> no, not at all, because then I'd be set to a one routine thing. I might as well be a janitor at that point. You know, I don't know. Maybe I could be happier. Who knows? It's come through my mind a couple of times. <laughs> well, you told me a little bit of the story uh, the other day about how you ended up kind of following your own path. Um, and you all had moved out here to Colorado. It's where you were, had grown up most of, yeah. the, most of your childhood. Yeah. And you'd come back out here after college. Yeah, and uh, tell us a story about uh, the uh, the anchor man, Danny Dodge. Oh, that you know. To be honest with you, I can't even believe that happened in my life. Um, <laughs> I was just putzing along in life, doing things. You know, I had I'd actually come back to Colorado because my wife said, "Hey, I love it in Colorado. Let's move there." I said, "You know, I'm tired of collecting bills from a client. You know, so let's do that. Maybe I can start a studio in Denver and do something different." Well, we got here, I spent about four and a half years at Lowry Air Force Base because there was no starting a studio here. Uh, oil had just gone down, so yeah. you know, climate was not real good for that. So after that, um, there was a potential job up here at Group Publishing. I went for that, uh, ended up getting that, was there for a year. And okay. uh, I, for some reason, I guess I've got this entrepreneurial thing that my father, my grandfather actually had, and I had to get back out on my own. So for a few years, I was actually toting around the, the little ones. Uh, it was almost like I had twins. And my wife was working at uh, one of the companies here. And so 
I was doing daddy care, daycare and my own business. And she says, you know, you look like you're wearing down. I said, oh, can you tell? <laughs> and so, I, yeah, I, I said, you know what? I am really wearing down. She says, just take a job for a little while. We put the kids in daycare and we'll do okay. And, you know, that was hard. But I went ahead uh, on her suggestion. And it was, I thought it was really funny. She said, hey, uh, there's a job opening at uh, Headline News in, in Fort Collins. And I laughed. And, uh, oh, that made her mad. She said, uh, you could do it. And I said, well, whatever. I'll try out. Well, frustrating enough, I actually got the job. So for the next year, I pretended to be somebody on TV who actually could read and look at a camera. That yeah. wasn't right. I got out of that realizing that it just wasn't for me. And so I'm done with that. But it was a really interesting time. We had the Matthew Shepard story. We had Columbine story. Uh, we actually broke the Matthew Shepard story up there in Fort Collins. So it was really interesting, some highlights there. But I, it was time to get out of news because I knew there were other things I'd rather do. And you, I mean, you've loved cameras for a long time. And I remember that that was one of the things that I remembered about you from college is that it seemed like you were always taking pictures. Yeah, it's strange because I went to college not knowing what in the world I would do. And thanks to a buddy, uh, Scott Fritz, yeah. he told me, yeah, you remember Scott? He said, hey, yeah, you, you got to try this, this video class. It's easy. I'll make good grades in it. You know, I go, hey, good grades, easy. That's a good thing for me because school <laughs> was not the easiest for me. Believe no. Me. Yeah, I was saved by music. <laughs> <laughs> it is great when you can do something you have a passion for. I just didn't know what I had a passion for. Um, and you reminded me, though, that the camera was in my hand most of the time. So I guess I accidentally realized that. Well, yeah. That, I mean, man, that, that's my chief memory of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of cheap memories, uh, remember Cheap Thrills, the show, oh. the stage show that the Divas put on? Oh, those are Do I ever remember times. Yeah, I was yeah, in the house yeah. band for that for a few years yeah, and just yeah. had a blast. Oh, man, that was, that was some fun stuff. Those guys came up with some real comedy acts and uh, well, a lot of fun to film. Yeah, and a lot, of those, a lot of the guys that came out of that ended up going on to do, like, you know, Todd and Corey Edwards uh, oh, yeah. started a film production company. And now, yeah. you know, I think at least Corey's still in entertainment. I don't know what Todd's up to right now, whether he's still making yeah. films or not, but... I'm not real sure, but I know Corey actually hit it uh, pretty good there. Uh, got a full-size movie up uh, on the screens. Well, Hoodwinked. Hoodwinked, that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe that. He did really good there. So, um, so That was one of the things about Anderson that I always appreciated was that um, it was a small school, but yeah. the, the talent that came out of there was just exceptional in, in a lot of really ways. It was really crazy. Yeah, I mean, amazing number of people who have, who went to Anderson are now doing stuff at a very high level. Yeah. And, uh, you know, take uh, Dave Shore, for instance. Uh, Dave has actually been, uh, uh, he was radio announcer for ESPN, I believe it is. Oh, okay. Um, Dave Shore, Dave, no, Dave Shore, Dave. I can't remember, but there's several of them went big time. Yeah. Um, and Brent Henderson, uh, he's doing really well. And of course, Stephen Curtis Chapman, yeah. he's made it big time in the Christian industry. Boy, these guys, um, they launched early on in their career too. It's kind of fun following them. Yeah. Well, Steve lived on a, on the floor that I lived on uh, <laughs> the first year I was out there. And uh, yeah. and those guys were on the road constantly. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> busy, busy guys. And they, you know, I remember like Brent said he was actually going down during school. He'd go down a day and record in one of the studios in Indianapolis doing jingles. So, yeah. you know, they were making extra money before they even got out of college. Oh yeah. They, they had that jingle company early yeah. on and i remember yeah. that too and I, I think that's still going oh yeah oh yeah. is it really yeah i, I think they're you, still I, still doing it i'm out of touch man really bad out of touch <laughs> pay <laughs> attention to facebook of, there danny yeah facebook. i know i know i know <laughs> seems like most of the time i'm posting on facebook it's it's proven to be a really good outlet for me as far as uh, building new clientele and stuff so i have to keep that content going on facebook constantly and sometimes i just don't have anything to do so you know i post something up there i go well Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I'm not sure. <laughs> Just never know. Never well, let's know. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, you started your own production company called Roadrunner Productions, uh -huh. and you do a lot of uh, work, or you have done a lot of work for outdoor shows, hunting shows. Yeah. Like did you actually work on Brent's uh, shows that he did? No, no. Uh, actually I actually had Brent on like first. Okay. This is a really straight. It's a lot of circumstances I'm not going to go into, but I ended up having my own outdoor show uh, back in 2008. It was a really tough time because that was when the economy hit bottom. Yeah. And, but luckily that brought me and Brent back together and I actually filmed him in Oklahoma doing a hunt 
And that oh, was a cool. blast. <laughs> yeah, that was, was really it, cool. Was that a boar hunt? It was, yeah. I think yeah. I've seen that video. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty funny because uh, one of the farmers said, you know, I think I saw some pigs out there right around this hay. Well, when I walked out there, the hay wasn't a foot deep. You know, it really didn't look like a foot deep. Uh, and as we walked into it, all of a sudden, a, hit, a pig would pop its head up out of that <laughs> stuff. And I go, what the heck is this? So this pig goes, boom, and shoots out. And all of a sudden, they got this gargantuan hog that's, that's slowly coming out of the, the hay. And I'm thinking, oh, good thing I'm in front of or behind Brent because I ain't got a bow. All I have is camera. So <laughs> luckily, he took care of the issues right then and there. <laughs> well, very good, man. And, and he's, he's gone on to become a very successful speaker. He has, um, yeah. Yeah, really doing some great things. Uh, it's impressive to see the programs that he's put together. But yeah. you, uh, you on the other hand, you have gone and uh, you've shot some shows of like NFL players that are out on hunts. You just got back from Africa. Yeah, that was a blast. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but you and said that, uh, you said the other day that things are kind of changing in the outdoor television. Uh, yeah. Scene. They kind of are. You know how social media is and how television is and was is not the same. So social mm -hmm. media is actually opportunity, an opportunity for people that are, are independents who produce content, very similar to like uh, the, the garage bands. You know, they're actually creating content. Well, in the last 10 or so years, you know, it's, it's taken uh, that middleman out where, you know, used to, you had to go through some kind of a record label to actually go big. Well, now yeah. guys can actually put their stuff on YouTube or uh, CD baby. And suddenly they can be out there in the world and become big without that middleman. Well, I'm thinking it's kind of transitioning to that here in the television land too, you know, for content. Okay. Um, we, the age or the uh, network I was uh, filming so much for got bought out by another gentleman who had probably about, six to 10, I guess, networks. Uh, that would be Mr. Cronky down in uh, Denver. He owns the Pepsi Center yeah. and a couple of the networks. And so when he did that, you know, my vision of what he was looking for is just another platform to build into the network. He'd already gotten all these, uh, well, basically when you buy that network, you have masculine entertainment, right? That's what you could term it rather than hunting. So right. it's a platform that's already built with men he wanted to expand, I'm guessing that he wanted to expand that into more sports and for general entertainment so he can build it and, you know, create more profit. So once that happened, you know, it's starting to limit the number of TV shows that shoot outdoor television for being on air. It's starting to reduce the space. And at that point, too, it's, it's it, you're going to have to pay more to be on television these days. You know, I yeah. think it's just getting more costly to be on TV. So. Uh, my thought and several others I know in the industry is that we're going to take this to social media uh, because you can do it on YouTube, Vimeo, you can do it on Hulu or well, maybe not Hulu, but Roku or whatever the, the other funny names uh, net, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, online networks are. And at that point, you know, you're your own man. You're not controlled by the networks. You're not controlled by any kind of uh, regulations, really, that say you can't air certain content. And that helps uh, for folks who really need to generate that income. Yeah. Um, it's not all about just the number of views you get on YouTube because, um, you know, that's tough, too. We're getting more competition on YouTube. It's tougher to compete. Uh, but if you go to your local uh, potential sponsors, non-endemic sponsors, uh, there's a greater potential of you actually getting some sponsorship and surviving at a level that you can as an independent or a, uh, a single producer. Right. So, yeah. So you're, you're basically doing both the camera work and a lot of the post and a lot. Well, I mean, you, you've got a real diverse um, pal palette of experience that you can work with. Yeah. You know, I guess it comes down to this. I was never a really great businessman and uh, being able to organize crews and things like that was not my forte, especially because of my periods of, you know, for 26 years, I was really pretty darn sick. So mm -hmm. my mental power was gone. And so what I had to do is rely on myself to do most everything and, I, I, you know, I, I learned it's, you know, there's certain things you're natural at and then there's certain learned talents that you get. Yeah. Well, I had not only because I had a chip on my shoulder because I screwed up pretty big in college, at least in my mind I did. <laughs> I had a set wall fall in the middle of my 
college production. That hit me really, really bad, you know. <laughs> and so from then on, I've been trying to knock that chip on my shoulder and just get on with it. But it, it drove me pretty good to get better and better and better. And when I see other people doing something good, I didn't realize that you could be a specialist and do only one thing good. I thought you had to be as good as that guy or as good as this guy. And so I worked really, really hard and got pretty good at a lot of things. So I can't say I'm natural at it. It's just one of those things I tried really, really hard to get. Over the years, uh, do you have a favorite uh, moment uh, as a cameraman? Ooh-wee, that's a toughie. I have never actually had that answer or question to, to answer. And, uh, okay, okay, I've got a really good moment here. This one happened back on my first trip to Africa. I was the last day of the hunt, and I had said when, when I found out I get to go to Africa, it was amazing anyhow, uh, I said, if I go over there, I'm going to dance with the natives on. I'm going to videotape this thing. Okay. So very last day, we're getting ready to head to the plane. I said, here, I threw the camera over to the other guy. I said, okay, somebody crank up some tunes, and I'm going to dance with you guys. And I pointed at the Africans there, and they're like, oh, you know, I know what they're thinking is, white guy? No, 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 no. <laughs> so I got there, and I don't know what's wrong with me, but I do have some flexibility, and I kind of get going, and to be honest with you, I can get jigging. And I think I just about blew these the minds of these poor African guys there. But they were laughing, and they had given me the name Mabush. And it means, because of my size, 14 feet, it means beetle crusher. So yeah. here I am as I'm dancing, and I hear these guys going, Mabush can dance. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that was a great moment. But the best moment of that whole deal was after we did that and we recorded that, we got into the plane. And I was tired, so I just kind of sat back in my seat. And all of a sudden, the other camera guy goes, look, look. And he's pointing. He says, hey, look at those guys. And they were over there, and they were doing the dance the way I did it. So it was so cool. A lot of fun. <laughs> Cross-cultural goings oh, on there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure they think all Americans are crazy, but it's just me, guys. So does that video still exist? It does. Um, Somewhere out there, I know I've placed it online somewhere. Yeah. I had to change the music though, I had to, <laughs> uh, because that was all political music. And if somebody over there heard it, they would probably be shot. And then they mm. come over and shoot me because somebody shot their brother or something, you know. Wow, yeah, you yeah. know, well, that's kind of scary. Pretty interesting. <laughs> well, we were we were in scary country, I didn't realize that, but we were over in uh, oh man, I, going over the other trip just here recently. Got all the names messed up. Uh, anyhow, I was going to say Botswana, but it's not. It's one of those what's a wanna wanna. Oh, okay. Something like that. Anyhow. <laughs> so, I can't speak African yet. <laughs> so the last, uh, it seems like it's been about a year ago, you put up a, uh, a piece that you had done for the Dairy Block in Denver. <coughs> oh, and, yeah. Uh, it had some really cool After Effects uh, animation in it and uh, yeah. some kind of neat drone footage. Um, you've really yes. gotten into the drone. Uh, piloting thing over the last couple of years. I have because the the drones are so new and I have always since I was a kid I wanted to fly a little bitty helicopter a remote control helicopter never could afford one and really couldn't afford one all the way up until I got one and that was only because the network had said we're going to send a drone out and have you learn it so you can fly. Well two weeks prior to the shoot I said where's the drone they go oh they canceled it I go no it can't happen. So I went and bought one, you know, and from that point on, it was just kind of like what I call the old man's toy. And so it, yeah, I'm making money with it, but it's a toy to me. You know, well, and recently you got one with a 4k camera on it. That's not oh, a toy. It's not a toy. When you spend two grand on a helicopter, <laughs> I, I keep saying, I don't want to fly it because I haven't made any money yet with it yet. So I mean, I just got it five days ago, but it's uh, it's a real trip. And yeah, it's, it's crazy. The thing can go 60 plus miles an hour. Oh, um, the footage is amazing. I just can't wait to see what, what I am able to do with this. And people go, oh, you're so good with a drone. I go, <laughs> no, that drone is making me look good. It really well, I saw is the fancy. piece that you put up over Lake Loveland. Oh, yeah. And um, What a unique view, huh? Oh, my gosh, that was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd never seen it that way before. I, I had uh, I'd been you know, to a couple of different sides of Lake Loveland with a drone. And, uh, but it does, it looks so different from the north side. Yeah, I wish I had that plane right now, but it's, it's so cool because the water goes down, you reveal a lot of things that you wouldn't know that's uh, on the bottom of that lake. It's amazing. Have yeah. you been playing a lot with After Effects and some of the animation? When the After Effects, when I first touched After Effects, it's probably 2000, I mean, no, 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 way back there. 
it, okay, it was, it was 89, nine, no, 90, 99, I guess. I uh, got into it, just got so excited. I couldn't hardly sit on the couch at night. I had to go try something new and uh, really got good at it for many, many years. And then I, I, you know, I just transitioned to where I'm doing more footage. I got to become a specialist with that and it was, it was good, but I still go back to the times when I need it. And uh, you know, like in the dairy block video, we needed to, I needed to fly over a particular place there in Denver and then edit. We were going to actually take the building that they had rendered and, and rise that up as I flew in, but uh -huh. the uh, architect would never get back to us. I don't think he wanted to release the image just yet. Yeah. So I ended up just building kind of a, a transparent box in After Effects as a 3D model, and I rose it up around one of the big cranes. So it, it worked really, really well, and you know people got they, they got the idea. So. That's so cool, and um, and and it's just it amazes me how much power we have in these little boxes on our desks, you know. It really does, because I remember back when you or I were in school, uh, a studio, a million dollar studio, what, what they did then, we can do like <laughs> five times that in our little bitty laptop. Yeah. Really amazing. I just, I, I marvel at it. Every day I look at the recording software that I use and I just go, oh man, <laughs> yeah. this, this used to be a million dollar room, you know? Oh my and, gosh, yes. And that's Very what you pay for anymore is just the room. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I've actually edited TV shows on an airplane. I've edited TV shows in a, in a deer blind. Um, <laughs> there's not any limit. And I've done animations in places where, well, actually, I was doing an animation of the DIA one time, and somebody came by, and oh my gosh, I couldn't get any work done. They were like, that's so cool. And I go, yeah, I know. I got to get this done, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. I, I, I've, uh, I've, I've recorded some like tracks just sitting in airports and bus stations and <laughs> riding on the metro in dc when i live there it's really just, yeah oh that's awesome man that'd be a really cool deal kind of a twist on thing maybe maybe um have the people join in and <laughs> you'll be the first to actually has this really cool uh multicultural song i don't know what you call it but uh yeah it's all about different and unique these days and becoming unique and different is almost hard because everyone's done it before so yeah that's true that's true it's like uh, coming up with uh, unique ideas now i think is is like one of the necessary things that you just have to continue to do is stay yeah. on top of what's happening technologically but also creatively it's like i look around every day and it seems like there's a new technique that's coming up for imagery that just blows everything that we've seen up until now away. Yeah. It happened yeah. yesterday, you know? Well, yeah, it's funny. I, there are guys out there so creative that those things, which you think couldn't be done become done. And <laughs> one thing that drives my mind crazy is this spatial recognition. Yeah. I can take a picture and post it on Facebook and immediately it pulls my name up, you know? Or I have a friend on there and I put it on there and their name is right below their picture. Um, there's stuff going on that, yeah, it's cool. Kind of odd and kind of scary in some ways. Too. Kind of creepy sometimes, you know? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't want my face to be that recognizable. <laughs> yeah, there's some days I don't want to be recognized whatsoever. <laughs> I worked hard to be this anonymous. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to yeah. us a little bit about uh, Danny Dodge Live, uh, your YouTube channel. Um, well, I'm you know, a lot of the camera things that you've put up there. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, part of the thing that I think it comes back to my background, the why I want to teach people is because when I was in school, you know, I wasn't a bad student, but I was not a great student by any, any chance. I ended up having to go to summer school. Um, you know, a couple of times I even did that during high school to, uh, to kind of get ahead on some mathematics because I really was not the best at mathematics. When it came to geometry and things like that, yeah, I knew it. Um, but so since I was not such a great student, um, and, and, and to step back, I threw a couple things online, you know, to teach people. And a couple of guys go, man, you teach so well. And, you know, you, I learn it so quickly. And I thought, wow, isn't that where the guy who can't learn can teach? Uh -huh. And I think it's really because they're my kind of people. Um, I'm not a book learner. You know, matter of fact, it's hard for me to read, read. My eyes don't track linear like this. They kind of wiggle and wobble all around. I guess you call that ADD. Um, but I can uh, teach people what I know in the way that I understand it. And so all these media guys, when I say something, I say exactly what I'm going to 
to say, you know, I'm not, I'm not up there to give it a lecture. I'm just saying it as it is. And I say, go try it now. And, you know, if you teach just that amount, I say, go try it. They're going to learn it. They're going to get it. And uh, so I've been really excited in the fact that I can actually teach some of my people, people like me, how to learn this early on, as opposed to having to go through an entire 20, 30 years before you actually get it. Yeah. So, yeah. So that, so Danny Dodge Live is kind of the YouTube version of your education piece, but you're also getting ready to launch some uh, some online training. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I've been in the works on this two years because I'm kind of a, perfect, a perfectionist. And I'm going to, you know, a lot of guys come in and, and ask, you know, questions about what I do in outdoor television as far as filming TV shows. And it all, I, can't, I think it originates because of my experience in film, uh, and shooting regular television, you know, it wasn't one of these things to where I just grabbed a camera and went out and started things. I learned it the right way. I actually learned how to do regular television, how to do film style shooting. So you're, you're actually creating a cinematic event uh, and telling a story at the same time as opposed to documenting. I, and I joke around about the way people have done in the past. I call them helicopter cameramen. They yeah. stand in one spot and they spin around, you know, they get the shots. Well, that's not what it's about. No. And so I had to really work to develop this curriculum uh, and this, this format so that I could take what I just do naturally and put it in a form other people could actually understand and learn from. And I spent two years. I would There would be times when I'm out on a hunt going, why did I just do that? And how can I communicate that back to these people? So I developed that, put it down on paper, and now I'm ready to actually film it and make it available for people. And boy, I'm so excited because once I actually get it in the hands of people, yeah. uh, I think it's going to make a huge, huge impact on the quality of outdoor television and other industries as well. If people want to watch it, it's a basically this, the same concept. Uh, it's just kind of focused on the hunting industry. Do you have any idea when that's going to be released? Uh, I am really hoping that by fall, I will have that all set and ready. I'm going to be shooting it this spring. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it'll be kind of different because we're, we're going to be, uh, we're not really going to be hunting. You know, we'll be doing the same things as we did, but it's not so much about the hunt anyhow, as, as, much as it is the structure mm -hmm. of filming, why you film certain things, how you shoot cover shots, how you, uh, how you work as a single man, single cameraman to create a multi-camera look you know those yeah. are all things that can be done and they don't have to look like reenactments um i'll step back real quickly because uh i remember going to one production company and uh, talking to one of the producers because they're going to hire me at my first trip to africa and he said uh you know he's telling me what to do and i said so you want it shot in more of an action style or you want a documentary or this and he kind of looked at me like i'm not sure what you're talking about and uh, so I said, well, do you want reenactment shot on this? Oh, no, we don't do reenactments. I go, really? <laughs> and, and I, for months, it boggled my mind. And finally, I realized what he was doing, what he was saying is because out, reenactments in outdoor television are really not very good. Yeah. And it's not about reenacting. It's about during the hunt, connecting or shooting as much as you can produce that short story from as multiple as many angles as you can without scaring the game off. Right. Yeah. But you have to go back in as if you were a second and a third camera to fill in those shots, which will help the entire storytelling process and amp up that excitement. So, wow, that sounds great. That, that, yeah. what, that, that course is going to be over the top, man. I'm yeah, hoping so. I'm up. hoping so. I'm excited about it. Uh, it's uh, the the bigger part is the investment of time. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have to take time to film it, but you also have to make a living, and you have to take care of my little guy downstairs. You know, Nick. Uh, yeah. Th that's and I love taking care of this kiddo, but I tell him, I said, Nick, I got to go upstairs for another little session here. So here I am talking to you. He's yeah, downstairs man. going, Dad, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> well. Tell him thank you for his patience. Oh, I will. I will. <laughs> There's only one other thing I wanted to ask you about um, on my list of things, and that is, um, you know, you, you do a lot of DIY as far as putting things together that you use for your shoots and for your equipment. And yeah. one of those is actually turned into a business of its own. It's called Cinerails. Yeah. Um, tell us about that. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a really odd story. Kind of goes way back. I've always been an inventor just because I had fun doing it. But tried at one point in time to invent and make money, and I made a little, but, you know, I got ripped off. 
basically the company stole the idea and that was it. I didn't have money to go after them. So I kind of said, no more inventing. I'm done with that. I spend more time wasted than, you know, I do making money. And uh, so yeah, many years passed by and I needed a dolly, a camera dolly I could travel with because in my business as a freelancer, it's all about staying ahead of the next guy. If you're better than them or you're at least apparently doing things they're not that can you know, bring value to a production, you're going to get called, uh, yeah. you know, have the job. So I was trying to do different things, and one of them was create this camera dolly so that I could actually travel with one, get these really nice moves, and especially on the deer, things like that. So I did that, and uh, then I'm filming some stuff. I'm, actually, I produced one uh, entire viral video for Lexus, and it was a race between a Lexus and a Jet. And in that, I actually well, I, used... You produced that. Yeah. yeah. So oh I, yeah, I uh, on that one I actually used Cinderella's. Uh, at that time, it wasn't a product; it was just my dolly that I did, and I put it on the corner of a track. And as the car came by, I did a not an arc around it, but I did an opposite one, so it allowed me to follow that car through the entire uh, shot. And the guys there had some guys from uh, L.A. there filming another something. <laughs> And he stood back, he goes, no way. And I go, why? <laughs> and he said, that is too cool. Where can I get one? I said, well, you can't because I ain't making it. <laughs> yeah. But um, my son, I, I told him, everywhere I go, these people are going, where do I get one? And he says, well, put it on Kickstarter. And Kickstarter is this uh, uh, crowdfunding site. Yeah. So I went ahead and put it on Kickstarter and cut the long story short, I ended up making like, Twenty-seven thousand dollars in a couple of days. Oh wow! And my my wife looks at me. She says, "You're in business." I go, yeah. oh, "Great, just another business." But <laughs> so there it is. <laughs> so is it is it still possible for people to get Cinerails from you? Oh, big time! Yeah, I mean, I literally, uh, it's kind of not yet taking over, but I can tell you, every time I come back from a shoot, I got to make like seven more or ten more. And because they're selling through our website at cinerails.com, yeah, every week. So yeah, wow. it's a real, it's a real product. And I, you know, what's really funny is <laughs> you think, okay, these are, the whole concept is it's a dolly, professional dolly that sits on top of PVC pipe. But the unique part about it is you can take that pipe and bend it. So you can get all these crazy cool arcs and uh, it's lightweight. You can take it anywhere. So if you bust a track, you go down and pay six bucks more, you got two more track, right? Well, you would look at that and say, yeah, that's kind of cheesy. but Saturday Night Live has one. Yeah. Naked and Afraid has one. I mean, there's <laughs> there's a guy in in uh, gosh, uh, Shane Hurlbut, I think his name is. I remember. He's a movie I producer. That name, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's got one. He actually promotes the darn thing even. So he does classes, and so he's using. I suppose he's using his classes or something. Yeah. But uh, it's really kind of cool because I've got guys literally all around the world that have these things, making movies. TV, making just fun little videos for themselves. And uh, who would ever thought it would come into this? Not me, anyhow. <laughs> That's awesome. What a great yeah. story. Yeah. Well, we've come to the end of our time, Danny. It's, it's gone by right. so quickly. And I just want to say thank you for being a part of this show. And, and Well, thanks for inviting story. me. I appreciate that. Oh, my pleasure. Um, I want to just give people the opportunity if they need to get in touch with you. What's the best way to find you? Uh, you know what? You can go to roadrunnerproductions.com and uh, there'll be a contact link there. You just click on that and shoot me an email and say, Hey, big and ugly. I saw you on the uh, Franklin's deal and I want to <laughs> talk to you about, it. don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're, you're, you're particularly interested in, in getting notes from people who have, have camera work for you, right? I would definitely love to do that. Yeah. Because I, I become a specialist in filming, not only on the ground, but in the air. And that's what I really want to focus on. Uh, of course, we say that after I've told you all the other things I do. But you have to have one thing to focus on. And yeah. that's what I really enjoy. Well, we'll make sure to include links for some of your footage and so that people can Thank see you. some of your outdoor work and some of your drone work and whatever else Appreciate we can it. find that might be interesting. All and right. I just wish you the best of luck. I'm going to go. This program is a production of MakeYourOwnWayMedia.com. If you'd like to know more about what I'm up to, please visit FranklinTaggart.com. I appreciate the time you've spent with me today, and I'd love to connect again. Until then, show up, pay attention, and participate. You've got this. I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to the house.